Women's Sunday Goddess Services, January 3rd, a 20, two, 252,000. Oh, look, I made a mistake. It should be Who's 20 plus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we go by 250,000 years of goddess spirituality as evidenced by the archaeological record. So we are looking for our next space. So sometimes people think, oh, the goddess temple is closed. No, we're still doing uh, a lot online and, uh, and in person also. We, uh, we still are, are gathering in many ways, mostly online right now. But we're getting ready to gather in person again in small groups. Today is transformation. We know that woman is the perfect embodiment of goddess on earth. We ask that you consider releasing any beliefs that are not of that wisdom and let your eternal radiance shine forth. Um, I'm going to call upon Marsha if she's got a, a, a purification uh, tool uh, to, to light it or use it. But I'm also calling upon us all to use this, this eternal radiance that is from within and shines out and connects with all the radiance of all that is, is, is purifying. And so I'm gonna ask you women to go in deep inside, take a deep breath and see sunlight before you, see huge, huge orb of sun before you and see this orb of light growing larger and larger and it's moving, it's like that sun you always see or the meteorite mm. that's, that's moving towards the earth, but it's actually stasis. It's staying in one place before you, but you can see the fire moving in and out and the glow and the glow, the glow of all that energy. And that energy is life force. It's a, it's a for, life force of creation. And this, this energy is within us. It is without us. It is within the center of the earth our great mother. It is above us in the heavens, in the sun, in all the planets, in the in extended out to all universes and the great universe. You know, I ask you to hear it. You can actually hear this movement of energy and feel its warmth glowing and growing larger and larger and surrounding you and extending out and out. And this energy is a purifying energy. It actually can purify your space. It purifies your aura. It purifies your energy, everything around you that surrounds you. And, and we feel this growing larger and larger and, and it feels warming and calming and peaceful as it grows larger and larger, encompasses all of us and bringing us all together as one huge energy. All the women who are connected throughout the, the, the states, throughout the world, who mm. are here with us. Thank you. Blessed be. Continuing as Mata has opened up the way for us to just feel, feel the radiance within us. As Mata was speaking, you may have felt warmth in your feet rising up, feeling a quickening and a silence in your space as you begin to really feel what purification feels like because it's already within us. We are pure and whole already. This candle, it's warm. It's warm is spreading out to all of us as we gather here from our womb space. We can feel each other. There's a wave as we all connect one to another, one to another. We are whole, pure, purified, 
and radiant, just as our blood begins to make us warm. Feel that in the silence, one to another, one to another. Blessed be. Blessed be. Blessed be. So let us ground and center and attune and just say quietly under your breath, your mother's name. And some women have difficulty with this because they had have such a challenging relationship with their mothers. And if that might be true for you, then simply acknowledge her as the chalice through which you came into the world. She did do that much for you. So no matter what kind of relationship you had with your mother, whether it was really wonderful as mine was, was it whether it was really terrible uh, or whether it was a little bit of both, which is true for so many of us, acknowledge your mother as being the the conduit, the sacred um, channel through which you actually took form into this physical world. And we remember that woman is the original shaman because that's what that means. Shamanic work is to bring information from the unseen world into the seen world for the benefit of the tribe. And so woman is the first magician and the first shaman. And every time a woman gives birth physically or creates something, uh, it doesn't have to be a human child, creates something beautiful, and brings it to the world. She is a shaman and she is doing magical work. So honor your mother for the work that she did, if, you, if you're willing, and uh, just repeat softly your name. I am Ava, daughter of Ethel, your mother's name. And let's say together, sisters, sister, your mind is your own. Your thinking is clear. Your thoughts are powerful. How do you hold your mind? Let us all the divine intelligence, the divine of, intelligence God. of God. Sister, your body is your own. Your body is beautiful. Your body is divine. How do you hold your body? As the sacred, the sacred body, body of, of God. We are women. <laughs> The carriers, the carriers of Shakti, Shakti the holders, the holders of, of humanity. We remember, remember always, always to, to celebrate our ourselves as, as goddess, goddess and God. embodied. So our intention together is to feel the transformation that is possible in this, the new year. We will be celebrating Butterfly Maiden in her amazing forms. And as you look at these, images see how unusual they are compared to European art. Mm. This is something so different uh, for the European trained mind in art. But we are looking at Butterfly Fly Maiden as her ability, her being the principle of transformation and her principle in the universe and as an aspect of goddess, the one great mother, is the ability to transform. Ahashan people, ancestors of the land that we reside upon, that we walk upon, we ask your permission to do this sacred holy work. We ask you to walk with us and bless us in this sacred space that we've created each of our own and all connected. And we feel that it's given. Blessed be. Blessed you be. You're here, you are here, you are here. Blessed be. Air and fire and water and earth, north, south, east and west. We acknowledge you. We do not call you in. You are already here in our bodies, in our breath, in our bones, in the twinkle in our eye, in the warmth in our bellies in our constant temperature of 98.6, element of fire, and the quarters, north, south, east, and west, surrounding us, caring for us. 
We know you are here, you are here, you are here. Hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. And we ask Priestess Marcia to please acknowledge our individual guides and guardians. Mm -hmm. Guides and guardians of every woman represented on this call and those who will listen to it later. We are embarking on a new calendar year and we are so excited to have you along with us. Today we're going to be talking about transformation and we know that you are always with us guiding, protecting, whispering in our ears, our animal totems, allowing us to feel love. We are so excited to be here again today with our sisters sharing and you, our guides and guardians. We know you are always with us and we are so thankful that you have come with us today from each of our homes as we are ready to celebrate and witness. We are here, therefore you are here, you are here, you are here. Hail and welcome. Hail and, and welcome. Great mother, power of life, source of life, creatrix of all there is, all the multiverses, the life power that lives in us as women, bringing goodness to the world. We acknowledge that we are not just part of you, we are you. We are the way you express yourself. We are the way you see your beautiful world. We are the way you taste through our tongues your beautiful world. We are the way you hear through our ears your beautiful world. We are you. You are here, you are here, you are here. Hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. I want to thank our fabulous Nyad priestesses for all they do. And I want you two to send me a new picture of the two of you together. Oh, yeah. You Looking find, that. you find, I have this one, which I love, but it's a little bit blurry. And it was taken at the museum, of course. Look how gorgeous and radiant you two are. Send me another picture of the two of you. You work that out. I want another picture to share. I need new pictures of all the beautiful women. <laughs> <laughs> and we have on this call my colleague, my teacher, my friend, special guest Vajra Ma, who I think is going to become a regular co-facilitator because she just brings so much to, yeah. she just says the things that are amazing. And that's why I constantly learn from her. This is a woman who has truly changed my life with her wisdom and her brilliance. She's the author of The Hidden Stream, uh, The Natural Spiritual Authority of Woman, and she's a teacher, of course. I went through her two-year priestess training program, one of the most valuable things I've ever done in my life, and she's the originator of the amazing tantric dance of feminine power. So Vajra, did we get your video going? Are you there? Okay. Yay! I muted. Hey. She is. I muted because my, she is. I muted because my dog was barking. <laughs> but we're glad to have you with us, uh, Vajra. Thank you for taking time to to be with us today. How are you doing there in Oregon? I'm so glad to be here. Just so glad to be here. Thank you for carrying on beyond the the physical space uh, into the um, the ethers where we all connect so deeply. Anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Bless <laughs> me. <laughs> oh, so we are today honoring the Hopi Kachina or Divine Spirit Butterfly Maiden. And in Hopi lore, Butterfly Maiden is, is a Kachina or, or spirit being who every spring dances from flower to flower. 
pollinating the fields and flowers. And these are Kachina dolls. And she brings life-giving rain to the Arizona desert where the Hopi have lived for thousands of years. She's represented by a woman dancer at the yearly butterfly dance, a traditional initiation rite for Hopi girls. Look how beautiful that is, Hopi girl holding her Kachina doll, her, her goddess truly. If you look at old pictures of Hopi women and girls, uh, they almost always have this, this amazing hairdo that is, is so exquisite and to me so, so queenly. The rite takes place in late summer before the harvest mm -hmm. to give thanks to Polikmana, which is her Hopi name. Hopi girls participating in the butterfly dance. Look at those amazing crowns and headdresses, amazing. Hopi girls participating wear ornate headdresses called kopatsoki. And just look at how exquisite those are. Look at the time required to, to create those. Look how they just radiate beauty, just beauty. Here's not more. Mm -hmm. Absolute beauty. These women have a sense of themselves as, as queens, as, as nobility. And nobility is an interesting concept. Patriarchy has turned that into some kind of separateness. Some people are noble and others are not. But the original meaning of nobility is just knowing who you are, knowing your, your divine worth, knowing you are created. By, by goddess, and that's nobility. We are all noble. We just have to remember it. Another beautiful one. They're all so different. The women's creativity goes into creating these gorgeous crowns. This is front and back. They're just as, as beautiful and complex and done. It's not like, you know, the front only. It's like, it's a, <laughs> it's a total, it's a total thing, front and back. <laughs> Look at that gorgeousness. And they have this interesting, um, usually something covering the eyes. And there's various meanings to that that I've heard, but this is not my tradition. So um, I will be respectful in that I won't speak about something I don't know for sure. So that's perhaps something to look into if you're, if you're interested. So the butterfly maiden represents renewal and springtime. And we don't think about renewal in the desert so much, but those of us who have lived in the desert understand that uh, the wildflowers can bloom and be absolutely amazing. And spring can be very different from the rest of the, the seasons. So even though the desert seems barren to us, oh no, there's so much life there. And the essence of Butterfly Maiden is that which brings this renewal every year. And the transformation from one form to another form, the chrysalis. I'm going to ask Vajra to speak about the imaginal cells. And uh, as I was mentioning that to her yesterday, we just took off into this hilarious, hilarious riff on irreverent. I I'm very irreverent. And I think mirth and reverence go together. And I think you can be mirthful and irreverent in a reverent way if you remember that goddess has a sense of humor and so Vajra what were we, we I've said please Vajra would you speak about the imaginal cells and would you talk talk women through the great transformation that can occur as we understand what the imaginal cells were and then Vajra just took off on this she's so funny what what were you saying yesterday Vajra what <laughs> Forget it, women. The world is such a mess. It's worse than even a cocoon suit that turns into a butterfly. Forget it. Imagine those cells. No, nah, they ain't going to make it. You know, just too late. Too bad. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> Which, you know, really relates to how we feel. 
you know, it's like, and, and that is the framing that um, doesn't get us into being an imaginal self and into being a butterfly. And the thing about this, I, I just noticed in the picture, um, the, the previous uh, slide where uh, as, as the, um, it was the cocoon, of course, is very dark, but the, you know, the, the caterpillar creates this cocoon, it's dark, it's opaque, you can't see through it. And as it was progressing, it got lighter and lighter and you could, you could see the butterfly inside of it. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that that was actual, that's factual, you know. Yes, yes. So it's, it's interesting, yeah, it's interesting that the, even before the butterfly is born, you begin to see it. You begin, you begin to see into what is being formed. So the imaginal cells are, what happens is, and, and I got all of this from Bruce Lipton, who, who talks about this, a scientist who talks about it. But um, this, this, the butterfly transformation is not just a metaphor. It is the pattern of transformation. It is in all through nature. It's in all, you know, like fractals. So it's not just a, a nice metaphor. It is reality how things change, how things are reborn, how things transform, change form. So we are in, what happens is the caterpillar is voracious, eats everything, and then finally it gets to the point where it can't take in anymore and the cells begin to die inside the caterpillar. All the things that are like in our own body, you know, you're doing this, you're doing that, it's doing this, it's, it's digesting, it's doing whatever those cells do, they start to die. So the caterpillar spins its cocoon and goes in and stops being a caterpillar and it goes into liquid soup. Total chaos. Everything's dead, supposedly. But uh, it is liquid. It's cocoon soup. Um, but there are imaginal cells in there that have the capacity to that hold the information for the butterfly to form. And the thing about those imaginal cells is they can become anything. They're not predestined to be uh, the, in the wing or in the body or in the antenna. They are there with all full potential and they serve. They serve what needs to happen for the wholeness to come through for the transformation. And these, this, this part of all this kind of stuff is a metaphor for us as human beings to realize that we as women, especially, we are the imaginal cells. First, I mean, that's basically how I see it. Any human being can be an imaginal cell, envisioning the future and being willing to surrender and to envision what can come out of the, out of the chaos, out of the cocoon soup that, that we're in now, the, the violence, the turmoil, the, everything um, that's horrible. And but that breakdown is essential. That has to happen. That's the thing we need to remember, that I need to remember. The breakdown has to happen. The soup, the liquid, the, the breakdown of all the structures has to happen in order for the butterfly to form. And so we're in that chaos now. And if we can reframe, make sure that we frame what's happening, all of the, the disruption and violence, and know that there are imaginal cells, and we can be one, that hold that will create the future, that will create the butterfly, the new, the new world of human beings, the new structures, the new structures of, of communication between us and love and creativity, um, harmony and, and interaction, healthy, creative interaction with, with nature of which we are a part. So, and, and I was watching Bruce Lipton, and I wanted to give this example, Arab Spring. He was saying how Arab Spring you know, there was a breakdown uh, uh, in, you know, in Tunisia is where it started and spread to Egypt, but in Tunisia. And they finally, one man burned himself alive, immolated, because he just couldn't live under this kind of, it was unlivable under this dictator. And that's, that ignited things for everybody and the whole thing exploded, right? And um, they got rid of the dictator. This is in 2011, 2010, 2011 then into 2015, they got rid of the dictator, but then the parliament was like this, polarized, like, like the US Congress is right now, right? Polarized, polarized. But what happened, and they were fighting over, they had no constitution. They had to make a constitution because the dictator was gone. And they couldn't come to an agreement, but then election day happened and a lot of women had been elected. And when the women came into the parliament, they were saying, wait a minute, why are we focusing on what we don't agree on? We must focus on what we do agree on and go start from there. These women were the imaginal cells and they developed a constitution that won the Nobel Peace Prize 
for the most humanitarian constitution okay, that had been developed on the planet so far, according to the Nobel Peace Prize. So um, a really good example of how women change things, how we are the imaginal selves. We are in this cocoon chaos breakdown, and it, it must happen. Like the caterpillar, we've been voracious eating everything on the planet, raping, rapacious. And now we cannot grow any further. We must transform. And we can do it. And so for us to hold everything that we see from the eyes of an imaginal self, knowing that we can serve, we listen, we surrender. We don't know what it is yet. That's the whole thing about the imaginal self. It doesn't know in advance. It forms into what needs to happen according to a deeper intelligence that's not linear, but that's at the source of life, goddess creating herself. And this is something that women can remember. Many women are qu quite stressed right now because there is the unknown. And you make this great point about the imaginal self, that a cocoon, a chrysalis does not know what's happening and yet there's a deeper intelligence that is holding us and taking place if we just trust. So I would love for you to say just a little bit more about surrender when one is stressed, when one doesn't know, because I hear women tell me all the time, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I don't know what's going to happen to me. What is going to happen to me? And this is something that really affects a lot of women. That's, thank you, Ava, that's crucial. Two examples, one of them is a sort of a more, mon a very mundane one that we're all dealing with. You know, back in the 90s, I was, I couldn't get work. I was, I was always living at the poverty level and I couldn't even get temporary work, temporary office work, uh, which is what I had been doing. And no matter what I did, no matter how much I put out there, I couldn't get it. And I, and I said to myself, I heard the teaching, the universe can't be wrong. Don't frame that as wrong. Don't frame what is as wrong. And I thought, okay, all right. How am I going to pay the rent? Okay, whatever. And I just said, okay, it's not wrong. I accept it. I can't find work. I'm not finding work. I'm, I don't know how I'm going to pay the rent. I accept that. And the next day I got work. So it's getting out of the way and you can't, you can't fake it. You can't fake it. And, and also it wasn't a big thing. It was just a choice I made to just say that, okay, I accept it. It's, it doesn't make sense to me. The mind doesn't make sense, but I accept it as this is right. And then the energies can flow. And I do know this at an even deeper level when I was 19. I went through a psychic inundation that was horrifying. And I was isolated. Nobody knew, even though I was living in my house with my parents. And I was on the brink of complete loss of mind, of any kind. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. I was being psychically attacked every night. And I finally just gave up and said, okay, whatever you are, go ahead and destroy me. I can't, I can't fight anymore. And the next day, well, no, but at the same time, I said, somewhere out in the universe, if there's anything that can help me, help me. And the next day, things, be, you know, certain things happened. A book came into my, you know, and it unfolded from there. And I was on the brink of what I thought was complete annihilation of my consciousness of being a human being. It was horrifying. And that letting go, that surrender, there is, this is not a belief, there is, our prayers are heard. And there is, if we surrender and frame it as, oh, I'm letting go. In this case, it was, I'm letting go. I, then the forces, we're no longer blocking the forces that can move and create the miracles. Our focus, and I'm not even going to call it our work, because I think we all have had quite enough of the idea of the work of 
improving ourselves or understanding things. I've been a workaholic all my life. I I don't want to use the word work. My work is, you know, I have to fix myself somehow. My work is to fix myself or to have a new attitude or to, you know, acquire this piece of information so that I can be fixed. No, I don't want to think about that as work anymore. So I'm framing it in terms of not the work that we have to do to understand that we are imaginal cells, but the, just the focus. All I have to do is turn my attention to it and surrender, as you say, surrender, turn my attention. It's not work. None of this has to be work. We are all inundated with this idea of everything has to be work, personal work, you know, work, 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 work. Oh my God, I'm so done with this idea of work. Life is supposed to be joyful, flowing, easy, graceful. And that's what I would like to affirm as I sit in my cocoon soup of not knowing if the museum is going to, you know, get a new space soon or later, or I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to sit in the soup and trust that the universe is not wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Vajra. <laughs> I'd like to speak a moment about cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation. You notice that when we invoked goddess, I did not invoke butterfly maiden. This is not my tradition. I am not trained in it. I have not been trained by the elders in the Hopi tradition. In some ways, and every woman must decide this for herself, but in some ways, I think it can be spiritually arrogant, if you will, to just invoke any goddess that you have not venerated, connected with, been trained in that culture. At the goddess temple, we honor goddesses from around the world. We talk about them, we teach about them, we share about them, but we don't actually invoke them. That's overstepping. That's one aspect of cultural appropriation. You can see here in these pictures, some other aspects. Look at these guys down here. You know, do you think these men know anything about what it means to wear eagle feathers? No. When this happens, or this, this young woman, if you don't know the tradition, you really should not appropriate that tradition, even in a costume because it's disrespectful in my opinion. It's disrespectful. The other aspect of cultural appropriation is when you as a person of one culture and, and white women are very guilty of this. You, you come from a European background and you learn a little bit about some other tradition, maybe Native American, and then you come out with your oracle cards, and your, your Native American oracle cards and you make money from that that is wrong. That should not be happening. Leave, leave that to the people who that's their tradition. So I'd love to have Mata and Marsha and Vajra in that order weigh in on their ideas, just briefly. Uh, we're keeping this section brief about cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation. Mata, do you have something you care to share? I do. Um, I, I really uh, appreciate that in the, at the temple, we honored goddesses uh, at different uh, services and rituals and that we taught about them. And I think it starts with an understanding of who the goddess is, because you can't appreciate what you don't know anything about. But appreciation is, is an expansion. So uh, it's a, it's a, a state of an expansion, it's actual uh, um, an action of expansion, of conscious expansions. But you haven't, it's like going into, you know, walking into someone's house and uh, knocking on the door. They don't know who you are until you're introduced. So this begins the introduction and that's what, uh, that's what we at the Goddess Temple 
have uh, supported over the many years in uh, our uh, creation of, uh, of uh, rituals and ceremonies and, uh, and altars. I don't think it's wrong to, to like make that intention to introduce yourself uh, or even have someone who, who has that relationship introduce you to the goddess. And then it's a, it's a relationship uh, with the goddess. So then what will you do with that? Right. How do you nurture that relationship? Right. Bless it be. When someone shows cultural appreciation, what tends to happen is they're more appropriate. More appropriate in how they see that culture. Often versus cultural appropriation tends to be more or less, I'm getting in on the trend, so to speak. Or it could be something like um, having a symbol on your arm from a different culture and you really don't know, but it's, it's trendy. It's the thing to do. Mm. Uh, when you have an appreciation, it's more of a reverence to not only the culture, but to the people. And we see this a lot, Ava, you gave, I, I liked your point about the oracle cards. That was really very appropriate. And I have seen, and Amata talked about the goddess temple, one of the um, most beautiful uh, a pre cultural appreciations I witnessed at the temple was when Audrey and Janessa, it almost made me want to cry. It was so beautiful when they had a salon and it was about the women of the blues. It was so beautiful. You could tell when someone shows appreciation, you can feel that they wanted to make sure that they were inclusive and respectful. And I, Ava, that was not uh, recorded, but it was one of the most beautiful ways to show appreciation for a culture. And I also believe that all of us have been victims or perpetuators of appropriation in, in some way, some form or some fashion. And I do appreciate the fact that when we talk about our goddesses, we are showing reverence and respect. Blessed be. Blessed be. And I was unmuted and I was muted. It's like the story of a woman, right? <laughs> there can be gray areas. I, uh, I have aspected goddess, specific goddesses in various rituals at, at the, at, at goddess temple events. And it did not feel appropriating. It felt honoring and celebrating and venerating. So there, there can be gray areas and we just have to feel into our hearts and, and realize what it is for us. Are we appropriating or are we respectful and appreciating? Truly, it's intention and what's in your heart. I, what I was going to say was, after my little joke, I realized that, oh, women have been appropriated. Our entire purpose and embodiment of the, of the, the cosmic womb, of what we are bringing to humanity. Women have been appropriated by men across the board in terms of civilization. And I'd never thought of it that way. And I'm just grateful to have that, like, like yeah. Um, well, that is, a, that is a, a huge thing, particularly going on in a new form right now. And I'm very glad you brought that up. It's a huge topic. We should have a salon just on, on that. Say just a little bit more about how men appropriate the culture of women. The erasure of women's history, the erasure of humanity's history, a lot of people think, oh, you know, it's always been this way. Men have been dominant and men have been the leaders and men have been in charge. You know, it's only been the last six to 10,000 years. We know that we have 2 million years of human history, maybe 200,000, maybe 2 million, who knows? Just the erasure of what women have contributed and the erasure of woman's sovereignty, the oppression of woman is an appropriation. You look at the mythologies of Zeus who gave birth to Athena out of his forehead. Well, let's get real now. That's total, you know, <laughs> don't get real. And the appropriation of uh, a male, male birth, 
which is the basis of patriarchal religion, that the male gives birth, the male god creates a male, and out of the male he creates a female. That's all appropriation of what is natural, of what, of what, and we see the results is disastrous. And now today, the very word woman is being erased, and there's an attempt to erase the word mother into like pregnant individuals, you know, uh, the pregnant, pregnant parent, and this sort of thing. Uh, and the creation of artificial wombs and the attempt to replace sex as a legal category by which women have fought for our rights, by which we've been oppressed because we're of our sex, not because of an identity, and to replace uh, the definition of sex in the, in the law with gender identity, with a feeling that you have. If you're a woman, if you say you're a woman, you're a woman. Right. The erasure of reality and of female. Thank you all for weighing in. We come to our annual broom blessing. Now, if you remember, if you had come to the museum and attended a goddess temple event, this is something we do annually. We ask women to bring a new broom and then we spend uh, 20 minutes decorating it and glitter and there. Meredith Kirby is there with all of her craft things and ribbons and blah, blah, blah. So we've had a great time with that. And we're just going to do a version. We always do that on the first Sunday of the new year because that's an ancient Celtic tradition is to get a new broom for the new year and bless it. If you have your broom, uh, I have my broom. Normally we would get a new broom, but we said for this one, just, just take your old broom and kind of purify it, clean it up, zoom, zoom. let it all get, uh, get all tidied up. If you brought, if you got the memo, if you got the memo, you can think a little bit about what qualities you would like. I found some old bells. I'm gonna decorate my broom with bells. Now, if you didn't didn't get the memo on this and you don't have a broom to decorate, don't, don't worry, just, just enjoy the moment and just think about what your broom does for you and what you intend for it and what kind of qualities you would like to imbue your broom with this year. Now, Mata, Marsha, did you happen to bring a, a broom to services? I have my broom and I have a little charm on it. And this is made with love. Oh, I got this beautiful little uh, decoration from Ashley Carter, wonderful woman. And I'm gonna put that on my broom. So Marsha, what else are you? What are, what are you? Oh, putting? and I have a gold, I kind of made it ahead of time, a little gold um, ribbon string as queen. Okay. So as I'm using my new broom, I will know that my home is made with love. I am queen hmm. and I'm doing my queenly work to keep my environment nice and tidy. And I also use um, some sweet grass spray after I purified my um, broom, and then I just sprayed the bristles with. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's fantastic. I hadn't thought to do that. That's genius. I'm going to do that too. All right, Maja, do you have uh, anything? Uh, did you bring a broom? Do you have anything you want to share about your broom? Well, what I have is on my altar is I have a, a tiny broom. It's about the size of a pen. Uh, with bristles on it. It's a real broom, but it's miniature. And I use that in my house clearing and blessings as symbolic on the altars that I create when I do the house blessings or, you know, whether it's virtual or, uh, you know, um, or a physical. And so that I'm, uh, this will stay on my altar for this this month in the beginning of, of the year. Um, but I, I didn't create uh, any decorations on a on a new one because I didn't get out out to get a new one. So, but I have my miniature one that's symbolic, and I think that's a uh, that was uh, inspired for me. <laughs> I thought that was inspired. I love that. All those of you who have a magic marker, if you want to write something on your broom for this year, with what quality? Will you imbue your broom for this year? Uh, Marsha, say again, what you said was so beautiful. What quality were you imbuing your broom for this year? Say that again for us. The qualities were neat and tidy. 
my home neat and tidy and I am queen of my home. Yes. Yes. And you are you are the one responsible for oh. cleaning yeah. the energetic quality of your realm. Even if and many of us live alone, um, if you can say living with two dogs, two cats, and two turtles is living alone. <laughs> many, of us, many of us live alone. And so it's easy for us to control our environment. Sometimes it feels a little less easy when you have a spouse in, in the house, when you have children, when you have people living with you. But there, the queen, the archetype of the queen, who, there's got to be one person responsible ultimately for the uh, energetic quality of the realm. And we talk about this in the, in the queen teachings. And so if you're that person, then you're that person. So right queen in magic marker on, I've got a, a gold marker. Then you can go back later on and see what, uh, what else you might like to put on there. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I didn't have a new broom. So I'm just cleansing and blessing my, my broom that has provided great service. Very yes. good. Very good. And, and Meredith, we want to thank you for yes. the years of leading sacred crafts at the uh, museum as we hold our brooms that we've decorated. Matra, can you give us just a brief blessing that, uh, that can wrap this up for us in a, in a wonderful way? Just we bless these brooms with the energies of queen and cleansing and clearing and the neat and tidy and we see the sparkling sparkles like gems and rhinestones and diamonds all around our brooms and around us and as we use it it br brings forth these these cleansing clearing clarifying imbuing energies and we feel transformed our house is transformed uh, all that we use this broom for is transformed it is not the same it is blessed 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 uh, uh, that was fantastic we don't have a physical space and so we have to do something else to keep connected to our members the people who support us with their donations every month and what I'd like to do is for us to have a craft circle where we make small gifts like decorated matchbooks with goddesses on them and just, you know, small, easy things. This would be normally the time that we would sing our offering song. Oh, great goddess, wealth and prosperity, riches flow forth from inside me. And a lot of people don't, a lot of women don't quite understand that we still need your donations because we have to pay for our professional museum storage to keep all of our artifacts intact for our next space. And we have to develop money for our next space. Please continue to be a member. If you're not a member and you would like to become a member, email us and we'll send you the necessary forms to just sign up easily with your credit card. And it can be as little as, I don't know, 10 bucks a month is very helpful. Just do your part to keep Goddess Spirituality alive and well. It is time to speak your truth, create your community, be good to each other, and do not look outside yourself for the leader. There is a river flowing now very fast. It is so great and swift that there are those who will be afraid. They will try to hold on to the shore. They will feel they are being torn apart and will suffer greatly. No, the river has its own destination. We must let go of the shore, push off into the middle of the river, keep our eyes open and our heads above water. Now, see who is in there with you and celebrate. I call upon Priestess Vajra to speak a prayer for all the women of the world as the imaginal cells they are helping to inspire them to realize this truth and to let go of their fear and to trust that they are part of the woman's collective that will create something new for this planet. Vajra lead us in prayer. 
Divine Mother, she who is, she whom we are, and we are you, and you are living within us. We ask you to activate in the wombs and hearts of women everywhere, the deep knowing that is our birthright, the knowing and the trust to follow that awakening, the knowing of that imaginal cell that women can feel stirring within them who they are and that we are one body, one womb, one being. Each of us an imaginal cell in the world that is forming through women's vision, through women stepping forward into a knowing of who we are, reclaiming our birthright. We ask that the emanations go from this gathering here and now, from our prayers, from the sound of my voice and the emanations and desires from the hearts of each woman here that it flow out to women unobstructed to every woman on the planet. We know that this is so. May women find each other and gain strength from each other to rebirth humanity. May women find comfort and clarity. May women find each other. So be it, blessed be. Blessed be. We have fulfilled the intention that we set an hour and a half ago. We have allowed ourselves to feel the possibilities of transformation and how we can get out of the way and allow that to happen in a beautiful, beautiful way, letting go of our fear, if we have any, and just allowing those imaginal cells, that soup, to reform. When the grandmothers speak, the earth will be healed. Sister, your mind and your body are your own. Your thinking is ever more clear, your presence ever more powerful. As you go forth from your woman's temple, how do you hold your mind and your body? As the divine, the divine expression, expression of goddess. Let's say together. We are we women, women the carriers, carriers of Shakti, the holders, holders of, humanity. of humanity. We go forth celebrating, celebrating ourselves in the, the presence of God on, God on earth. On earth. Each woman here is so full of goodness and for that we are so grateful we are filled with love courage our gratitude for all that we have all that we see and feel we know that this is true for each of us we are all so grateful not just for what we see but what we feel that feeling, that connectedness that we have one for another, bringing us together like-minded, beautiful, conscious, unwavering, even in our discomfort, we are so grateful for all that we have, those things that are coming forth and through this transformation, life for ourselves and for our world. We are so grateful. Blessed be. Blessed be. More great Hopi wisdom that many of you have heard. A people are not defeated until the hearts of its women are on the ground. And our hearts are not on the ground. Mm -mm. Our hearts are not on the ground. They are uplifted because we have each other, because we have trust, because we know that we are the emanation of goddess and goddess is not wrong <laughs> great mother we say thank you 
for all the life, the life, the life that is all around us. Even death is life because there is no death really, just transformation into a new form. There is only life, there is only life, there is only life. And we surrender to all this beauty and goodness. And goodness. So ah. Let us thank the ancestresses. Ancestresses, we have been touched by the transformation of you who have lived and gone before us and we walk in your footsteps thank you thank you thank you and marcia uh were you did you guys i forget guides and guardians, the guides, and guardians. Mm. guides and guardians animal totems of every woman represented here today we have heard so much about transformation and as we leave this space in this time, we know that you will be able to remind us all of those things that we need to know as we transition, transform. When we are uncomfortable, you will bring us comfort. When we don't, don't know what to do, you will whisper that wisdom that we know <laughs> deep inside of us because we sometimes forget. <laughs> Guides and guardians, thank you, thank you, thank you for participating with us today. Blessed be. Blessed be. Oh, air, fire, water, and earth, north, south, east, and west. We do not say farewell, we just say thank you. So dissolve any cords that may have become attached and let those go because you can reattach them at any time but just stand in your own power in your own goodness in your own strength your own compassion your fierce compassion stand in your own power as a woman and feel your back straighten your shoulders go back feel the power in your body for goodness blessed be we have uh, three online clean teachings classes next. Everything I learned about gracious living from my cat. <laughs> it, it will be it will fun and amusing. And uh, it's one of our free classes. So I do invite you to join me. And here is Debbie, who uh, Vajra gave to me, you might know, uh, many years ago. And uh, he's also known as the evil genius but he is a master at gracious living and getting me to do everything for him. I am his slave. The boundaries uh, we will talk about, and that's why you see the poppy goddess there with her hands up, which can represent boundaries, but also epiphany and calling in goddess. So we have a lot to share and we'll have a lot of laughs with this, this little short uh, one hour class. <laughs> And this is where we normally sing together and pass a warm hug. So we'll just have to do that virtually. Our circle is open, but unbroken. May the love of the goddess be ever in your heart. Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. Social hour will follow in just a moment. Feel free to depart now if you need to. We thank you for your support. We thank you for being in this circle with us. You've added, even if you've not spoken, even if we have not seen you, we have felt your heart. We have felt your energy. If you would like to stay and chat with the women, we're going to let everyone have their video shown, everyone unmute and just have a chaotically wonderful soup of, of chatting for a few minutes. So get yourself something to drink and return in two minutes for our social hour online. Next services will be Sunday, February 7th. And this concludes, for the moment, our women's services.